Good evening. I'm David Muir. And I'm Elizabeth Vargas. How many of us have felt the dread of being pulled over by a policeman? Maybe going too fast, a taillight that's out. It could be anything. But now a group of women who say that they had a very different reason to be afraid. They say a menace wearing a badge. And right here tonight, both sides, that all-American cop and the women who were once too afraid to speak out. We know you're going to have strong opinions here tonight. So join the conversation. We're live on Twitter and Facebook as this story unfolds. Here's ABC's Juju Chang. Now, what's your first name? Daniel. Daniel. Daniel, I just have to sit in here. Sure. And you see what you, like? you have to sit there. You've seen the good cop, bad cop routine, but never one quite like this. In a tiny overheated interrogation room in Oklahoma City, the good cop, Detective Kim Davis, 28 years on the job, is very good. This is gonna make the rumors go away. And the bad cop, patrolman Daniel Holdsclaw, is allegedly very bad indeed. He's not here to solve a crime, he's the suspect. You have the right to remain silent. You understand that? Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Oklahoma City has a hardcore cowboy culture and a state capital with its own oil wells. But at night, beyond the blur of traffic and the neon rainbow glow of the Skydance Bridge, there is a dangerous side of the little city on the prairie, the Northeast. Police Chief Bill City knows it well. There's a lot of gang activity. It's a lower income area, and there has been in the past a lot of crime in that area. I'm willing to make a statement and answer questions at this time. I did not want an attorney present at this time. Officer Holdsclaw is accused of sexually assaulting a woman he pulled over on the night shift just hours earlier. It's a stunning tumble for a hulking former football hero. Holtzclaw in on the tackle. His loving family says he's always been a gentle giant. His dad, Eric, and mom, Kumiko, and sister, Jenny, have many mementos of his gridiron glory. This is Eastern Michigan. Holtzclaw, nicknamed the Claw by teammates, was a football star in high school and an All-American at Eastern Michigan University. What a story Holtzclaw is. Young man out of Enid, Oklahoma. He excelled in football. He became an all-state player at Enid High. He was recruited to a Division I school. And he wanted to go play in the NFL. He wanted to be a pro football player, and that was his dream. The 2009. The lifelong dream dashed the night of the NFL draft. The Kansas City Chiefs select Tyson Jackson. It just didn't make the cut. It's really competitive. It's the disappointment of a lifetime. Holdsclaw turns from pro football dreams to his second career choice, police work. Here we go, come on. He continues to stack muscles on his linebacker physique, endless hours in the gym pumping iron. Squeeze. That's where he meets his girlfriend, who asked us not to use her name. They bond over barbells and bodybuilding. My best words to describe him is a big teddy bear. I mean, he's really sweet, he's really kind. Mwah. Good night, baby. And religious, too. She says they attended church every week. Daniel would send her Bible verse selfies. Romans 12, verse 10. Love one another with brotherly affection as members of one family. Holdsclaw even had a verse tattooed on his arm. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. They'd only been together six months, but were already thinking about forever. Do you think this was leading to marriage? Definitely. Holdsclaw is little more than a rookie, just three years on the job, but already getting a reputation as an aggressive officer, a pair of brass knuckles in his patrol car. A local newspaper says he enjoys chasing down the bad guys as much as opposing running backs on the football field. His dad, Eric Holdsclaw, is a police officer too in the family's hometown of Enid, Oklahoma. I would say he was a proactive police officer. Um, he liked to, to get in the mix. He wanted to catch the bad guys. Uh, he was very proud of that. He wanted to make a difference. Yeah, I've never been in trouble like this before. Never got accused of anything like this. But Holdsclaw is a cop in a tight spot. And we told you that there was a traffic stop, right. that somebody made some allegations against an officer. Right. It's 2 o'clock that morning, off duty, driving home in his police car, which many officers do in Oklahoma City. Holdsclaw makes a traffic stop. Do you make traffic stops normally after work? I don't, but in that case, I saw her swerve and whatnot. Holdsclaw describes a routine stop. No ticket, just a warning about her expired driver's license. I'm like, OK, I'm, I'm just off work. I'm tired. Um, get your license taken care of. I cut her loose after that. Then where'd you go? I went straight home. 
He admits he never bothered to call it in, and in another violation of procedure, had shut down the communications and GPS tracking system in his patrol car, something he says he always did after so, work. Did you run her on your MDT? No, I didn't. All my, all my stuff as far as that, because I didn't even call it in and say it was a traffic stop, my computer was off and everything as well. But that female driver is telling police a very different story. She says the officer made her expose herself and sexually assaulted her right there in the back of his patrol car by the side of the road. Well, was there anything, an accidental touch, a anything? If she thought it I, when I passed her, Jerry, but I, it was nothing as far as I felt like I would do anything as far as sexual or anything like that. Detective Davis had met with the woman earlier that morning. What was your first impression of her? Her makeup was smeared because she'd been crying. I mean, I can see her face right now and the fear in her eyes and in her facial expression. Nothing sexual went on during Nothing. that 15 minutes. Nothing sexual. Holdsclaw's sister says all she sees is a man telling the truth. When you look at the interrogation video, mm -hmm. what do you see? That's Daniel. Daniel being honest, straightforward. He had nothing to hide. Detective Davis disagrees. I just thought he was very robotic. He didn't express any shock. No, if I accused you of doing something like this, or if I was accused of something like that, my voice would probably go up 10 octaves, and I'd be like, what, I didn't do that. Did your pants come unzipped, unbuttoned, anything while you were standing right there? No. But after more than two hours cornered in that stifling interrogation room, I don't know if this shirt's gonna be big enough for you here. There you go, boy. He's stripped of his badge, his gun, and humiliatingly, even his uniform. Standing there in borrowed clothes in that tiny room, Holdsclaw calls his girlfriend. Hey, baby, Bev, I need to, <laughs> I need to tell you what's going on. It's crazy. You've just witnessed the end of Daniel Holdsclaw's short career in law enforcement. Hey, uh. Until this investigation gets all completed, what's going on, we're going to put you on administrative labor pay, OK? Sure. Not only is he no longer working for the police, now the police are working against him.